Happy you know our next guest from seven seasons of New Girl. Now he plays a cartoonist named Keith in the new comedy Woke. You can see it on Hulu now. Please welcome Lamorne Morris. Hi, Lamorne. Hey, hey. How, How you, you doing? doing? What do you have Paul behind Dr you? You got the NBA jams uh, going? Oh, what's happening there? <laughs> that was scary. <laughs> Are you talking about this? Yes, there's a man holding a picture. Oh, no, no, it's just my uh, LeBron painting. Being, it's hung up on the wall right now, so. Wow, you have a painting of LeBron James uh, on yeah. the wall in your home. You're from Chicago, right? Uh, that sounds like that's a problem for you, Jimmy. It's not, uh, it's not a problem, but I'm surprised that a guy from Chicago would have a uh, LeBron painting hanging in his home. Let me tell you something. Yes. You, only put the great, you only put the greatest up on your wall, and LeBron James is the greatest of all time. Wow. Okay? Wow, that yeah. is a huge statement from a guy from Chicago. You're going to get run out of Chicago. Let me tell you something, OK? I got friends from Chicago who come in town to visit me all the time, and they always say the exact same thing. And my thing to them is, look, if you don't like it, you can sleep your ass in the basement. How about that? <laughs> Wait a minute. So, I don't have to sleep in the basement, do I? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're rich. Sleep wherever you want. OK, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Lamar. So, Lamar, yeah. you, does LeBron, have you met LeBron? Is he a friend of yours? How did this happen that you became such a big fan? That's a sticky situation. Okay. See, I, I, I have met LeBron on numerous occasions. I feel like him and I are connected, you know, soul-wise. But the thing is, he kind of, whenever I say hi or whenever I go to, like, introduce myself or tell him how much of a fan I am, he's always busy. You know what I mean? He's always doing other things. So we're, like, two ships passing. Uh -huh. the night, uh -huh. and he's always, like, on his way out. I'm like, dude, LeBron, I think, like, you're so, like, you know what I mean? Like, like Miami Heat and, like, you know, and then I look up, and he's already out the door. So you're not so really I two ships passing as much as he is one ship fleeing. Fleeing. <laughs> well, I mean, tomato, potato, that's, that's how you feel. <laughs> not me. Not me, man. You look not very me. sharp, by the way. Are you wearing a tuxedo? Let me tell you something. I put this tuxedo on because I thought I was coming in to see you. Oh. And, and they were like, nah, stay your ass at home. So I was oh. like, I'm not going to let this thing go to waste. Who so told you to stay at home? I'm desperate to get somebody to come in here and see me. <laughs> <laughs> the authorities, the powers that be, told me to stay my ass at home. <laughs> By uh, the way, so that's what started, I did. It's starting to get scary, the guy behind you with the, with the picture. It's like, this is like, oh. like, it looks like a scene from a horror movie. Uh, why is LeBron you, wearing a tennis outfit, too? Oh, hey, hey man, how you doing? All right. yeah, that's Kyle. <laughs> hey, Kyle. Do you have other basketball stuff? That NBA Jams uh, game is pretty sweet. I do. I have this massive, like, sta it's like a statue or an art installation in my backyard of a, of a 23, I guess. Of the number 20. Can we see it? Yeah, see, I would walk out there and show you, uh, but during the pandemic, my friends have been treating my house like a dog park. Oh. So apparently, their dogs don't poop, so either either they're liars or I've been like sleepwalking and dropping deuces in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's that's a permanent part of your backyard. It's a part of my backyard. Now I can move it around if I'm uh -huh. feeling fancy, if I'm feeling sexy. I can I can change the colors of it. I can make it Lakers colors. You but. Did you try, did you tell LeBron about that? Did you tell him you had 23? And I assume, it, not the Jordan 23, did you tell him you had his number in your yard? No, no, the, the phone number that I have for him to try to call in text has been, it's just, I must have, <laughs> he must have changed his number, so. He was in the bubble when I got this anyway, so it's like, you know what I mean? If LeBron goes to another team, if, if he leaves the Lakers and goes someplace else to win another title, will you root for the other team then? Yeah, Lakers can kiss my ass at that point. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't give a laughs> I am not shy about it. I, mean, I can change colors too. So if he goes and plays for the Bulls, I can change the 23 to, you know, to like red and black. I can and what win. happens when, God forbid, LeBron retires? Do you give up your love of basketball or will you then settle on a team? I'm not sure if you heard me in the beginning. I said we're connected at the soul. Oh. So when he retires, I retire. <laughs> okay? I, I no longer watch basketball. I mean, it's as simple as that. <laughs> but more, this show, the, your new show, is, uh, it's an interesting idea. You've got, you play a cartoonist. And I do. Inanimate objects around you are animate objects voiced mm -hmm. by a lot of very famous people. Yeah, we've got Cedric the Entertainer, J.B. Smoove, Tony Hale, Sam Richardson, Keith David, Nicole Byer. I mean, the list goes on and on. Jack McBrayer. Um, we have a, a fantastic cast of voices, like you said, 
are absolutely insane. Absolutely insane. And are any of those people there with you when you are when you're shooting the show, or is it recorded? Uh, it's recorded afterwards, but that's it's kind of a problem because sometimes we'll have their recording there. And the thing about working with like like JB Smooth, for example, is he improvises way too much. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah. You would tell him a you would say the line is, "Hey, I'm a talking marker. Deal with it." And he'll go, "I'm a talking marker. Now deal with it." But here's the thing. Okay, you want to get yourself a pocket full of loose grapes or corn nuts and just have them in your hand and shake them around. <laughs> you want to pass them out individually. I'm like, JP, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> uh, so you realize a little that, bit that imitation is so good, you don't need JB to be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> do you, who else do you do? Do you do a lot of, uh, of voices? What's the best uh, one you do? I play, I play, let's see if you can guess this one. Okay. This is one of the people of the Lakers. Let's see. Um, uh huh. Okay, the Lakers are in a bubble right now, huh? Is that what you're telling me? The Lakers are in a bubble right now, and eh? that takes dedication and that takes focus. Unlike the Clippers, eh? Who get distracted and lose focus because of lemon pepper breasts and thighs being shaking their face. That's why the Lakers will win the championship this year. I promise you that. I guarantee that. That is excellent. That is really a very very good. That was my Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's not so good then. Well. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you um, you worked with JB on uh, on Barbershop Three, right? And uh, Cedric yeah. as well. Cedric, Anthony Anderson. The cast was this cast was crazy. Ice Cube, obviously, Common. Yeah. Was that a fun yeah. set to be on? It's one of the funnest projects I've ever been a part of, only because of how you got all these brilliant comedic minds in the same room going at it. I tell you, there was one time where there was a scene where it was just Cedric the Entertainer and he says a couple of lines and J.B. Smooth has one line in response. They start going back. I'm, I'm talking a quarter of a page length. The scene ended up being roughly about 15 minutes long because <laughs> J.B. starts improvising. And again, he starts talking about the most random things. He starts talking about pit bull puppies and licking your faces and, and, and dogs peeing on your lap and all kinds of stuff like that, which was not in the script. And then Anthony Anderson gets in, and they, they have this pretty much cacophony of jokes going back and forth. And so me, as a comedic dude, I was like, man, I really want to be a part of that. So let me just let me just dive in a little bit and try to add my two cents to the, to the, to the pile. And then as I did it, Anthony turns around and goes, oh, no, man, you got to cut the off. No, that's not your character. <laughs> He's like, that ain't your character. It'd be a call cut, and the director comes back out. Lamar, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's not for you. Let them, let them play. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling, you know what? At the end of this interview, I'm feeling a little bad for you. <laughs> yeah, thanks, man. That's why I'm drinking. <laughs> well, it's great to have you on. Um, you know, if you need a friend, come by. Guillermo and I aren't doing anything at all. Again, I've tried. They would not let me. <laughs> <laughs> Woke is on Hulu now. It's Lamorne Morris, everybody. Thank you, Lamorne. We'll be right back with my morning jacket. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. An evil wizard has trapped me inside this YouTube video. Click subscribe to help me escape.